probably the biggest stress I have is, the, is this need to come up with something new every season. Um, or if not new, then at least interesting and cool and good, you know? Which is sometimes a lot harder than just something that's new. Every season, you know, you want to feel like, you want, you want it to be a bit of a struggle. Like, I, it's a, I don't want the collection to come too easily. Um, you know, you want, you want to grow, you want to feel like you're pushing yourself and that, and that things are moving forward, that it's, you know, if, if only to keep yourself interested in it, you know? And I think that, um, well, at least I hope that the more you, you, you're interested as a, as a kind of artist or creative person behind it, then that, that, that other people will, you know, will be interested in turn. For a few seasons, I'd been starting with more of the softer things, like the drape, the fluid pieces, dresses, that sort of thing. Uh, and for fall, I really wanted to start with coats, with the tailoring, with the jackets. So that kind of works as this exoskeleton layer, and then everything else is just getting smaller and more delicate and, and lighter and softer underneath. So there's all these um, kind of upside down ziggurat shapes where you start with a, like a kind of molded funnel upper that's really short and cropped and then there's a jacket and then there's a vest and then there's a dress and then there's a skirt kind of all underneath everything in a descending scale. Um, that's sort of the, you know, the silhouette idea. And in terms of the feeling, I mean in general and the textures, um, most of the contrast comes through the textures and material versus through color or through kind of a loud print. I mean, there, there really isn't any. Um, so it's, uh, instead of it being like vis about visual contrast, it's more about a kind of sensual tactile sense of contrast, which as a wearer, putting the clothes on, you really get a heightened sense of it. And then, I mean, the overall sensibility is this sort of, um, kind of like post-goth romantic minimalism in a way. So not a stern, cold, industrial minimalism, but something um, with romantic kind of inclinations uh, and, and, a, and a kind of softness to it. The materials are often the starting point for, my, for the collection, or at least really kind of helps the ideas that are sort of loose up until then um, coalesce into a framework. Um, and specifically this season, there's a lot of uh, very textured surfaces. So whether it's velvet or um, kind of like a nubbly, tweedy kind of um, mohairs that are brushed, a lot of pile, which means that the fabric has, uh, has a surface texture and a direction. Um, the fiber is brushed in a direction so you can feel the softness. Um, a lot of washed things that kind of add to the, you know, it's not smooth and flat and dry, everything's kind of a little softened. Um, all the silks, for instance. And um, the prints this season are, are um, done in a new way. Um, I mean, I've been doing a lot of digital, ink, uh, digital inkjet prints for the last few seasons. And, but I've just been feeling, um, I don't know, a kind of desire to get away from that a little bit and to do something that's a little bit more holistic and a little bit more um, connected to the fabric instead of something that's just layered on the surface. So all of the prints this season are reactive and they're done with a bleach medium, which subtracts dye and in some cases even fiber from the fabric itself. Uh, and then it becomes impossible to control exactly, so you get these variations and inconsistencies in the material that gives an overall, I don't know, interesting tactile quality. Um, and there's just a bit more of a sensitivity there, I think, in the way that the print and the fabric works together. We've been designing or thinking of um, a customer in terms of like a, like a mother-daughter customer. Um, and this sort of happened over the last couple of years um, because I started developing mother-daughter customers. So um, people who come into the studio, sometimes they want the same thing, sometimes the girl wants something, her mom wants something else, sometimes the daughter wants something but she'll make the mom buy it for her, you know, like, oh mom, that'll look great on you and I'll get to borrow it, like that kind of thing. Um, really trying to cultivate an, like a younger customer but not neglect the people who, you know, who have the disposable income to spend on clothes, which are, at the end of the day, kind of expensive. Um, so try, trying to think in, in those terms, something that's not so age-specific that it alienates a large portion of the market. Um, and then, you know, we think of where we're selling as well. We sell in Canada, we sell in Hong Kong, we sell in Taipei, we sell in Dallas. Um, so not everyone needs a winter coat, you know, in the winter. Australia has their summer during our winter, you know, it's sort of, so we always have to make sure that there's, um, 
I don't know, it's, sort of, it's not quite accurate to say something for everyone because obviously it, it's not that and you want it to still be your own and yourself. So on the one hand, you're designing for yourself and then on the other hand, you're designing for your clients. I hope that my fingerprint kind of emerges, you know, and isn't something that I have to consciously put on. Um, I think through a kind of evolutionary organic design process, things emerge that, that, that are my own. Um, and, you know, I think that's how it's done. Inspiration's sort of funny for me. Because I don't look at a lot of magazines. I don't, you know, I don't really do mood boards all that much. I am, um, I'm not sort of searching through, through the visual for things to do my, few ideas a lot of the time. Sometimes that happens, but usually it's more, I don't know, it's more temperamental than that, or it's more ephemeral, or sometimes it's way more practical, like, oh, there's this cool fabric, and that becomes the whole basis for, you know, you can decide a collection. Definitely in terms of, like, the business models I aspire to, it's definitely along the Belgian slash Japanese method. Um, I really admire the kind of companies that um, Dries van Noten and Andy Moulinster have built, or um, Yoji or Ray Kalkubo from Comme des Garçons. Um, people who, who are on a sort of a vanguard, of, uh, on a vanguard of their own making, um, who have really signature ideas and a, a really defined aesthetic. So you get on a train, you get on a plane, you, you take your collection somewhere where people will see it, and that's certainly, I mean, that Belgian method ha, uh, has certainly and you know the inspiration for how we've been operating. Yeah.